Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 6 to 10 of the Senior Maths Challenge from 2020. I've put all of these questions and more in a free online course, Get Ready for the Senior Maths Challenge. In that course you can work through all of these questions, not just with the video solutions, but also with my video hints before each question to help you get into the question and to solve it yourself. So I think that's really the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. I'll put a link in the description below, you can go over there and sign up, it's totally free and there's no ads or distractions like there are here on YouTube, so do go and sign up over there. Of course if you'd rather watch the solutions right here on YouTube, you're very welcome to as well, and we will now get on with solving those problems. Question 6 it says there are fewer than 30 students in an A-level math class, half of them play the piano, a quarter play hockey, and a seventh are in the school play. Uh, so the key here is to know that the number of students must be an integer, must be a whole number, and uh, that means that if I can uh, have a seventh of them, the number must be a multiple of seven. If they're, if I can have a half of them playing the piano, then it must be a multiple of two. And if a quarter of them play hockey, there must be a multiple of four. So we need it to be a multiple of two, a multiple of four, and a multiple of seven. Obviously, anything that's a multiple of four is automatically a multiple of two, so we don't have to worry about that. Four and seven don't have any factors in common, so the lowest common multiple of four and seven is four times seven, which is 28. And in particular, that's the only multiple of four and seven that's smaller than 30. Uh, so... Uh, there must be 28 students in the class, and it says how many play hockey? Well, it's a quarter that play hockey, so we've got 28 divided by 4 is 7, and the answer is E7. Official UK accident statistics showed that there were 225 accidents involving teapots in one year. However, in the following year, there were 47 such accidents. What's the approximate percentage reduction in recorded accidents involving teapots from the first year to the second? Um, well, so really what we want to know here is, you know, what is 47 as a fraction of 225, as a percentage of 225? Um, so there's a couple of ways we could um, do this. We could just uh, kind of round 47 to... Uh, a close-ish whole number, or we could say, ah, oh, well, if I look at 225, you know, I know 10% of 225 is 22.5, uh, so, you know, 20% would be uh, 45, and so actually this number is going to be closest to 20%, uh, it's going to be closer to 20% than 30%, surely, which is going to be 67.5. So, um, so it's a 20% so it's 20% of the year before, that means an 80% reduction, and so the answer is D. You could also do this by like rounding 47 down to 45 first, or up to 50. Um, you know, again, you could do 50 over 225 is uh, 2 ninths or something, which is, um, so that's 22.2 uh, recurring percent. And uh, then you could say, oh, it's a bit too much, so uh, we've rounded up. So if I go back down to 47, it'll be 20% 20, uh, 20 will be the closest again. So however you get there, the answer is D, 80% got a classic math challenge question here. What's the largest prime factor of 106 squared minus 15 squared? Of course, we're meant to rely on the difference of two squares formula here that says that x squared minus y squared is x plus y times x minus y, giving us a nice factorization of the result here. So if I take 106 squared minus 15 squared, that's the same as 106 uh, plus 15 times 106 uh, minus 15. That gives me 121 multiplied by 91. 121, of course, is 11 squared, 11 times 11, and 91 is 7 times 13. So the prime factors of the answer here are 7, 11, and 13, and uh, the largest one of those is 13, and so the answer is D. Question 9, we've got a racing driver being allowed to use the drag reduction system, provided the car is within one second of the car ahead. And it says, suppose there are two cars that are one second apart, and they're each travelling in the same direction at 180 kilometers per hour, um, how many meters apart uh, are they? Well, really this question then is just asking you, in one second, uh, how far would these cars travel, right? That's the distance they are apart here. They're both going at the same speed. They, say, they stay the same distance apart. So it's just saying, how far would this travel uh, in one second to get here? Uh, so one hour, that's 60 minutes, or 60 times 60, which is 3,600 seconds. So uh, if we're going 180 kilometers every hour in each second, we'll go 180 divided by 3,600 kilometers, uh, which is, uh, we can divide top and bottom by 10 here, we've got 18 over 360, which is 1 20th, so it's 1 20th of a kilometer, and we can times that by 1,000 to uh, make that into meters, and 
uh, that gives us uh, 50 meters, which is 1 20th of a kilometer. And so the answer here is B. Right, we've got a bit of a logic question here. We've got these six friends, uh, Pat, Kazim, Raymond, Sam, Tara, and Uma standing in line for a photograph. I'll just call them P, Q, R, S, T, and U from now on. Um, there are three people standing between P and Q. So let's just uh, draw that. So I've got P and Q, and then let's just say there are three gaps. Uh, two people between Q and R. So R could certainly be here. Um, could R be the other side? Well, if there was two people between them on the other side, there would now be eight people at least in this line. There's only six. So it must be actually that R is over on this side. And then it says there's one person between R and S and Sam is not at either end of the line or S is not at either end of the line. So if there's one person between R and S, well, S could be here or S could be here. But if S was here, um, then S would be at the end of the line uh, because that would be six people in total now. So it must actually be that S is here. Now it says, how many people are standing between T and U? We don't know where they are, but this one must be either T or U. And then the other one of T or U must be either to the left of P uh, or to the right of Q here. So it could be here uh, or could be here. But either way, there'll be two people between them, um, either these two or these two, P and R, S and Q. So uh, whichever arrangement they're in here, it must be that there are two people between Tara and Uma. And so the answer is C2. Really hope you found that useful. Don't forget that all of these questions and more are included in the free online course, Get Ready for the Senior Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more with the video solutions and also my video hints. You can select the answers, it'll tell you which ones you've got right or wrong, and you can work through the whole paper like that. I really think it's the best way to prepare for the Senior Maths Challenge. Anyway, really hope you found this useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me uh, get this content out there and helps get this into the uh, feeds of as many people who might find it useful as possible. Anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.